This card is for the current Lawn Fanatics Challenge die cuts. So here I have two of the new die sets, Stitched Teacup and Stitched Teapot. I have yellow and these colors will be the same for both the teapot and the cup. Now both of these die sets have these layering pieces and so the top layer is the one that I'm going to spend more of my time trying to color nicely. The bottom layer, I still will add color to it, but that's just in case, you know, I don't get it exactly centered over the bottom piece. It'll still be the same color and it won't be noticeable. All right, so if you hadn't noticed, this is a Beauty and the Beast theme card. So right now I'm doing Mrs. Potts. Since she has a decorative bottom piece, I am taking this plate die from the mug set and I'm going to color this as the bottom of the teapot. It was actually a really good size and shape for this. Unfortunately, there wasn't one that really worked for the teapot. Nope, not teapot. <laughs> I'm already messing up. <sighs> it's been a long day. What I meant to say was there wasn't one that really fit for the teacup. Here I just have my layered teapot lid and I was making the little ruffly detail for the lid. Now obviously this die isn't conducive to this so I had to kind of get creative with it. So it does extend past the lid a little bit. Alright, now I have my RV colors and I am going to color the little top of the teapot lid. This is real simple. I didn't add a ton of shading or anything. And now I'm going to add the little, you know, I really don't even know what I would call this kind of detail. Leafy kind of shape. Um, it's wider with the pink one. And then I did add like a little bit of shading here. Again, I don't know how important this was. And then I'm taking my B marker and I'm making the same shape, but just thinner. And you can see I'm getting a little messy with it at the top. It doesn't really matter. It's going to co be covered up by the bottom of the teapot. Now for the rest of the lid and in between these little leaf shapes on the bottom, I am just going to color in with my V markers. Now unfortunately, I did not show you the full coloring for this. So you'll see me go in with V12 and then you don't see it anymore. At some point I did realize that I hadn't added any additional color and I did go back in with my... V17 and V15. I ended up missing recording that part. So it's not there, but I did try to keep the shading towards like the underside of the little ruffles and towards the bottom of the leaf detail. I don't know. I really, I do not have good names for these things. But right there at the bottom of the bottom yellow band on the bottom of the teapot. How many times can I say bottom? So I glued down my lid and realized that my little ruffle detail doesn't quite line up. So to fix this, I am taking my colorless blender and I'm kind of pushing away the purple ink. And I'm going back in with one of my darker yellow markers to fill it in. And then I'm just adhering the rest of my overlapped pieces onto my teapot. Now here comes the scary part. I am using this extra small Faber-Castell artist pen. And I am outlining all of my little fine details. And part of the reason I'm doing this is because there will be black later when I do the face, but also I felt like the details, you couldn't really see them that well. Especially where there's yellow next to pink, it really did not seem like there was much of a distinction between those two colors. Now here, when I'm trying to color in where the dye has made lines, it was super difficult. So I kind of got it a little wonky, so I decided to pull out a thicker pen and add that line back in there, make it look a little less messy. This is another portion right here that I felt like kind of got lost a little bit. And here, the truly scary part, making the face. Now, I, you probably can't see, but I did off camera draw in a light shape of the mouth and the eye before I came in with this pen. Like, I'm not that crazy. <laughs> I'm also not that good. So, I did have a light sketch of what I wanted my face to look like. Now here I'm taking this brush marker. This is a Prismacolor one. This is actually Copic Safe. And I'm just going around the edges of my die cut. And this is just to kind of keep it cohesive. It looked a little silly with 
the black lines everywhere else, but not around the full image. So I'm just rectifying that by doing the same thing you would do if you were fussy cutting an image and wanted to kind of hide that your cuts weren't perfect. All right, moving on to chip and the handle. This is the same thing I did on the teapot. Now I'm also going to go around the rim of the cup with the same yellow shade. And this is where I decided I would put in the little chip in the cup because, I mean, it's not chip without the chip, right? <laughs> so I just kind of roughly cut a shape, a little triangle shape. And then I had to figure out what I was doing with the bottom of this cup. So I decided it was best to just kind of roughly sketch out the shape and then try to cut it as best as I could. Now this took a little bit of messing around with it to get it to a shape I actually liked. It was much easier to do Mrs. Potts, at least for this specific part anyway. Now that I have my base piece cut, I am going to finish coloring in the parts that I need to be yellow. And I do minimal shading here, but I do go in with the darker colors right around the left and the right sides of the yellow pieces on the bottom. Here I'm just gluing the little handle down and then I'm adding some more shading around the top of the mug. Now this is pretty much going to be like Mrs. Potts. I'm just doing the little blue and yellow details the exact same way. Nope, blue and yellow. <sighs> blue in pink. Jeez, Jessica, get it together. It's not that late yet. <laughs> uh, again, with my fine liner, I'm just tracing out the details. I figured this part would be easier before I adhered this piece to the teacup. All right, another scary part, adding the face details. And you see, when I did the eye, my oval shape didn't quite line up the way I wanted it to. Luckily, the teacup is white. So to remedy this, you just take your white gel pen and kind of go over the spot that doesn't look the best. And then nobody will ever know. I do fill in the eyes with one of the thick fine liners. I didn't bother leaving any highlights because I knew I could just put that back in with the white gel pen. I also decided to fill in the little gap between their tongues inside their mouth and the outside of the cup and the teapot. And then this was a last minute decision and I decided to add the additional piece on Mrs. Potts which is the little spout. And now here I'm just taking one of my grays and I'm just giving some light shading. Again, this isn't, you know, super detailed or, you know, not a lot of blending going on here. It was more just so it didn't look so flat. Now here's where I'm taking my jelly roll in size 10 and I am adding the little highlights to the eyes. And for Mrs. Potts' lips, I just grabbed a random red, colored them, and then hoped it would look alright. And this one actually did. Maybe I should have picked it a little better, but she has red lips. I had to go back over the little spout with the marker around the edges just to make sure it matched. And now I'm just trying to get a decent size and shape of paper to go behind Chip to make it look like, you know, he's an actual cup. And the die set does come with an oval that goes there. But because I cut the little triangle out, it wasn't going to work. Like there would still be a gap and it would look funny. I did decide to add a little bit of extra line detail for that chip also. Now here I have my card panel 
and I'm just masking off the edges a little bit with some washi tape. I did kind of de-stick it just slightly on my arm to make sure that it wasn't going to rip up my paper. And here I have the paint splatter background stencil from Lawn Fawn. And if you follow Lawn Fawn anything, you'll know this is one of their new products. It's super fun if you don't have it and you think it might be fun, it is. You should get it. <laughs> here's, here's me being a bad influence. All right, I am shading this, shading this. I'm not shading anything. I am ink blending this with sponge sugar, shaded lilac, and tumbled glass distress oxides. I was trying to keep it very light and that purple got kind of dark. So luckily the teapot ends up right there. So a lot of that darkness you don't actually see, but when I envisioned this, the whole thing was very pastel. And here, because my stencil clearly wasn't big enough, I'm just figuring out which position I want it in and I am going to blend over on this other side. Now, I did not clean off my stencil, which was a big no-no, and it kind of got a little muddy right here. So I did have to stop and clean it off, which you don't see because I try to cut out a lot of the nonsense of my videos, but I still tell you about it, just, you know, so you have that information. And now that my panel is completely ink blended, I am going to remove the tape. And then I decided I was gonna have a little yellow border. So here I have a ruler. Thanks, Kate. <laughs> I'm still getting used out of these. Um, I also have one of the yellow Copics that I used for the yellow parts of my pot and my cup. And I'm just lining my ruler up as best as I can with the edges of the ink blending. And I'm making sure to clean off my ruler between each swipe of the marker. That way I don't drag yellow ink all over my panel where I don't want it. The edges weren't perfect, so I just kind of made them look intentional. Here, I still didn't know what the sentiment was gonna be, so I decided that I would make it have a magical birthday. And to create the word magical, I am using another die set, and this one is Henry's ABCs, as well as my V12 and B12 markers. Now, the reason I stuck with 12 for both of these, other than the fact that I used this color already in my card, is because they're close enough that they can blend decently well. And I decided to put them blue on top, purple on the bottom. It's nothing fancy. I just did it real quick. I went back over it to make sure that the blend was a little bit better. But, I mean, I was going to add shines and sparkle effect to all of the letters, so I knew it wouldn't be... Too noticeable if it was a little off. So that's exactly what I'm doing here. I am taking my white gel pen. I actually have various sizes that I'm using throughout this and I'm just kind of making loose star and shine shapes all over my letters and then I'm gonna go in and make dots as well. The final effect should look like it's sparkling and shining. I am going to stamp the rest of my sentiment, but in order to do that, I did lay everything back down on my card panel so that I could get a good idea of where I wanted to stamp my sentiment. So I'm using Have A and Birthday from the Pool Party stamp set. Now there's a bunch of Lawn Fawn stamp sets and just other company stamp sets that have these sentiments in there specifically. I just chose this one because it was on my desk. Now carefully moving my whole panel to my stamp positioner, I am going to stamp my sentiment a couple of times. And the reason I'm doing this is because this isn't a super black, black ink. It's actually my Copic Safe ink. So I stamp it a couple times to make sure it's dark enough. Now I have additional letters that I glue behind the colored ones. And this is just for a little bit more dimension. Here I'm just gluing Mrs. Potts and Chip down. They got adhered with liquid glue, and then I'm going to do the same for the die cut part of my sentiment. This is where a T-ruler would be really handy. Thankfully, this die set is actually pretty easy to line up all the pieces fairly straight, so it actually wasn't too terrible. And now my card is complete. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll be back with another video soon. 
Bye.